Welcome, everyone, to the Real Hoovians cast, episode 987. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm with Scott. What's up, Scott? Greetings, one and all. What's up, Philip? Good evening, or good morning in my case. What's up, Patrick? Hi. Okay, so tell us, Philip, what, what is going around? Like, we just did something more fair, so why don't you explain to people what, what's happening? Right, well... It, it has come to many people's attention, and uh, it, it's kind of been uh, widely known already. But it was seen that in a clip, in a clip scene where Pearl Mackey is walking through the streets of wherever they are uh, with, with a with a with a bum, it turns out the bum is actually the master in disguise. But we don't know what capacity he, he is with her or why he's with her. So it's, it's John that, Sims' master. It's John Sims' master in disguise. Um, filming with Paul Mackey. Very interesting. Mm. Nice. And mm. in, the scene, in the scene, he's explained to her something fell from the sky. Is he, is it a thing where, like, she knows who he is? Like, she always talks him frequently? No, or is it a, I don't just. Think, I don't think she's even aware that this is the master. That's she probably knows who the master is, really, but yeah. Yeah, it depends on what point he, that John Sims turns up in the season. If he, right. turns, up, if he turns up earlier in the season then, and, uh, as himself, then she'll recognize him. But obviously, he's in disguise here. So therefore, if he, if he wasn't, then she would know he was the master. So therefore, logically, dictates that she does, she's not aware who that is. Now, I'm wondering, does Missy have memories of this? Well, or is it a situation where... You know, it'd be like the memories would be blocked, or I mean, I mean, because then she would know she's interacting with her other self. That, that sort of thing happens with the doctor, though, doesn't it? Whenever he meets his other self, their memories are always kind of like uh, wiped out or phased out because of their. Um, or sometimes they're not. In the case of the fiftieth, where the eleventh, well, the eleventh, his memories were hazy of. Yeah. You know, that they, happening right. They always say that the incumbent doctor will remember meeting the past one, the all the past. Everybody, ones. right. Yeah. Because then it would alter the timeline if you remember what he said to the, the doctor. You know, it would change everything. Um, all right, so now we also don't know if Missy and the Master are working together. I would assume that it would be the case. Why would you work against yourself? If Depends. If, if you know that, you know, you already went through that already and you know that's a mistake, you know, what you're about to do or something. Maybe maybe that master didn't want to be friends with the doctor, and Missy does. Yeah, in order to get close enough to screw around with his uh, mind. Yeah. Right. So maybe she's like, "Listen, I'm not a part of this," you know. And maybe he shoots Missy, and then she rejects. <laughs> well, well, maybe one master needs something from the other because at the end of the day, um, it depends where we, in that um, um, we've got a trailer where we see Sims master with a beard and the blonde hair. We have to work, we have to work out at what point in his life is he at that point? Is it after the end of time or before the end of time? It's got to be like I would say after all of that. But then, yeah, that after the end of time, that body of his was desiccated and destroyed almost. But this this master looks like he's not having the threat of becoming a skeleton and eating people. Exactly. Yeah. He, he but, looks like controlled, like it's healed already, and he's just calm and collected. Yeah, this is why I'm thinking it's before that happened. No, it's got to be after. It's got to be after they resurrected him. Because they, okay. were, if you remember when they resu resurrected him, he was hungry and everything because it was stopped from going through. So, you know, yeah, that could right. be it. What do you have to say, Patrick? There he goes. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's his butt. All right. <laughs> All righty then. Well, oh, there we go. <laughs> Lucha Libertad. Okay. Um, all right, so what do you think, Patrick? Uh, I'm thinking she doesn't know who he is and that he's going to be a major villain, even though I don't want him to be. I'm hoping, beyond hope, even though I know it's not going to happen, that he's actually working with her to save the doctor. But I know that's not going to end up being true. Okay. Is it possible that due to the events of one episode that Bill and the doctor don't get along or no? I mean, we did hear that she shoots him with a bullet, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, well, but that's, 
That's for a reason, though. Okay, so they're fine, I guess. The doctor. Now, what was the thing you told me about him being blind? Yeah, um, as I as I've alluded to this magazine at the front, you can see here that he's wearing his shades throughout um, episodes. Um, but isn't that the Sonic shades? It could be. It could be. I, I mean, I'm just. Definitely... So I heard he's bringing that back too, the Sonic shades. It's been brought back, hasn't it? We've seen mm. it once already. But I'm of the illusion because at the end of option, it is stated that he suffers some some fatal fatal harm to himself at the end of oxygen, which follows which follows bleeds through into the next um, three episodes. I'm thinking that as well as damaging his uh, wrist, his, um, his, well, his breathing system, um, his eyes his eyesight gets damaged. Oh. For three for three episodes or two episodes even. But he's not completely blind, right? He's kind of impaired. Well, like I say, you've got certain images throughout the um, throughout the episode where he's wearing the shades constantly. He's in that, in right. that there, he's wearing the shades there. He's, he's wearing them oh, so maybe his eyes are sensitive to the light or something? Unless it's to do with the Veritas book, where, where, where it says anybody that reads it uh, will commit suicide. So, so for, so, so for him to prevent himself from doing that, he's reading it through some other through some other optic way by using the shades. Could be doing that. But something like that, that's taken from if if Moffat's doing that, then Moffat must have watched the unholy movie. Because if you remember that, like there was like this demon thing and, and it was um who was the uh, guy? Ben Cross? Yeah. And he became blind at the end. Like, in, like, so he wouldn't be um, defeated by the evil or something like that or whatever. Or it was also Rosemary's Baby, I think somebody was blinded to or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's interesting. Um, and even even there again, in the next one, the premiere of the end of the world, there's another image of him blind wearing a shade. I see. But okay. he does have a walking cane. He has a cane? No, I said, does it look like he has a cane? Oh, okay. No, it's true. I see what you mean. I see what you're saying. So, so I don't know. Something, something's not right about him wearing those shades. Well, you know, it's never, we've never really seen the doctor get injured while he's still in the incarnation. So that's interesting. Yeah. So he's going to be injured at the end of oxygen, and that was a, that was to the point that he's quite damaged. But he's, they say he, he's holding off when he regen, does that regeneration. He does it to cure something, but he's holding off the rest of it until the end of the season, until Christmas, and then he'll let it all go. So in other words, that he is technically can't stop it. Yeah. But he can hold it off, which would probably cause he's a massive uh, problem with him if he's yeah. holding it off. He's weakened. They say in the, in the, in the passage, he's weakened throughout that, that uh, three-parter, and it, it follows and it bleeds into the rest of the season where he finally gives up and... Does he sing? Where so in other words, is he? Is he? Is he? Uh, where the first doctor's actions may come into play. Yes, he might come into play and ease him through the regeneration that he's got got to play with. So in but, other words, does he have more control over the regeneration now? I guess that he can hold it back. I mean, that's the thing that he's. Well, they done he's with, they've done that with Tennant. They've done it with um, Smithy. It's not. It's not a new. Yes, they they've held it back, right? So he could talk to Clara. And then he can talk to, he can look at all the companions, he can do all those different things, right? He held it back. Yeah. Okay. Until but, the very end, which would technically be how many hours? Is like 48 hours. So maybe 48 hours he could visit like a thousand places with the TARDIS or something. Yeah. Yeah, he has a 48 hour window of regeneration. Or something like that. I don't know what the yeah. exact amount of hours is, but I remember River said she's within so many hours of her regeneration cycle. That's right. So she got to stop the bullets from shooting in the stomach. So, yeah. All right. That's interesting. So, in other words, he did film the regeneration sequence already. Yeah. That's but then what is the Christmas then? That's just a flashback? I don't know what that is. That, that's probably, I mean, he rege when they say he filmed the regeneration, it's probably partially filmed it, which means he hasn't fully regenerated to the point of being a new person. Or did they film it for the Christmas special but just not do it? No, no, no. It's, it was specifically for the, that episode, um, the one where he got shot. Which one? Seven? Know. Eight? Um, 
Is it lie of the land or is it? It could be lie of the land. It could be that one. That's seven, right? Or is that eight? Which one's this one? This one's number. Which is the pyramid one? Pyramid. Uh, hang on. Xfinity is six. Uh, the pyramid one is seven. So it's a three-parter that he's holding back. Three -parter. Yeah, a three-parter. So it's, it's six, six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight. Right. And then he does stuff, and then he goes to these ice warriors, which is like what? Ice warriors is what, nine, or is it? No, I think it's not. It, it was once ten. And, it moved and how, many, how many episodes is the finale? Is it two or is it three? Right. So you've got Eaters of Light after the ice warriors one. Then you've got the World is World Enough in Time. And then you've got the Doctor Falls, three episodes. But it sounds like the world enough in time sounds like something connected to Clara in a way. Yeah. But even though I mean, it's a weird title. World world enough in time features both Sim and Gomez. Okay, and so in other words, are they? Let me ask you a question: Is the master thing resolved before the finale, where oh, yeah. then they're not in the finale? It would have to be that way. Is that what's probably going to happen? So we're thinking the master is going to be in the finale, but he may not be. Because you got the Mandazi and Cybermen, which what the hell is that? That's yeah, something else that's entirely. Something that's, that's the other thing that flummoxed me. What what part does the Cybermen play in all this? And then the first doctor showing up in the finale, then carries over to Christmas. I mean, is it a thing where he's he helps, you know, the twelfth and then they go to Gallifrey, right? I guess, or whatever. Well they, they say they actually help him. They say the Christmas story is about redemption. I'm not really sure how that will, how that will well, Clara probably. I mean, maybe. Yeah. I hope it's the master. <laughs> well, I mean, I, they said I, that I, Clara I, was supposed to be in it. Uh huh. What? I said I never get what I want, so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You never know. You may get what you want. I mean, we don't know. I mean, we think we know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for all we know, the Candyman could be behind everything. We don't know. <laughs> One of these days they're going to do something. Hopefully it's not until, you know, one of us starts working with Doctor Who or something like that. It's probably Candyman in there. Why not? <laughs> probably like, yeah, we, we need like a million dollars to get the rights. I'm like, all right, you know what, just do it. That or looks at the Candyman's head. That would be kind of interesting to see. The Doctor gets a present in space. Yeah. He opens it up in the TARDIS and it's the freaking Candyman. And he's chasing after him throughout the TARDIS, in the TARDIS. Ooh, better yet, have a set. Well, I'm surprised uh, Moffat hasn't done One this. of his villains got the Candyman, put it back together through the TARDIS. <laughs> I'm surprised Moffat hasn't done a story based on Seven. Moffat does the weirdest things. Lately. Yeah. He, he so just, I was just thinking maybe uh, that's where the whole Candyman's head comes into play. If they would have made Candyman behind the emoji robots, that would have been perfect. But they did. And then you see the Happiness Patrol show up with Beepy. Yeah. Dog. Or did the dog die? I'm trying to remember. Beepy died, right? The dog? I gotta go back and watch. I don't remember. Beepy. Yeah. No, it did die. The dog it died. Beepy. He got blown up. Yeah, and she cried. Oh, Beepy. Yeah. Beepy. Yeah. Beepy. Yeah, she was miserable. And they painted the TARDIS pink. Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Red can, red can. Well, wait. Don't they, don't they paint the TARDIS red? In an episode, in an episode, or is that just Missy squirting around? No, it didn't paint it red. Didn't they paint half of it red? It was like a thing. Didn't you see that, Scott? There was pictures, and it was like Missy, and like half the Taurus was red. Oh. Yeah, I think this maybe Missy was just being so. I don't think she. I don't, maybe she didn't paint it. She just altered the customization from the Tardis. Oh, wow. I remember, I think the doctor said he keeps it. I think in one episode, it, it might have been one with River where the doctor said he doesn't know how to change it. Well, when sudden. he was the sixth doctor, he fixed the chameleon circuit temporarily. Yes. And then it became an yeah, organ, exactly. it became this. And then the TARDIS itself said, this sucks. And she broke the, the circuit herself, the TARDIS. <laughs> and then, the police book show. Yeah, just, yeah. I, I don't like that. Thanks. You know. So... TARDIS is used to its form. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we got now. What what's going to happen with the with the ice warriors? Is there is it just a one elf episode? It's not going to be big. It's just going to be like, oh look, there's a female ice warrior. That's it. I, I mean, 
you'll get a whole colony of ice warriors within that episode. What what bugs me a little bit about having those we've got Zulu Zulu soldiers on the moon. I don't, I don't I can't say that word. But yeah, but he's I, against the humans, right? Huh? Is he going to be against the humans, or is he going to be against the ice warriors? He's going to be against against the humans. I think. I think he's going to stand for stand by the ice warriors. So the humans are there to invade the ice warriors' domain and take what they can from them, kind of mm. thing. Is there a civil war between the ice warriors? Well, ice warriors are always at war with each other. That's why they've got different leaders. Yeah. That's why you. Ne- that's why you never see one faction team up with another because they're always fighting amongst each other. I'm just wondering if the ice warrior queen gonna be like the ball queen, sort of like they all they all answer to her as a high. Oh, that's horrible. They, horrible. they better not do that. They better not do that because that'd be silly. Is there anything yes. that's gonna to happen to the companions that we know of? I mean, is Narl get blown to bits or you know what? He's he's part in all this is still a secret. No one really knows what, what he's what he's really there for. It's but it's it's going to be leaked out. It's going to be inked out again, like the um, the vault thing. His part in it's going to be slowly revealed. He's probably going to go out a hero. Yeah, yeah. Saving Cause, the doctor. Because I think it, I think he's got the same kind of thing like uh, Donna Noble or the Catherine Tate, one season companion because of their popularity on TV. So mm-hmm. they, can't, they can't maintain that with him. Something will probably happen. His head pops off and. Roll somewhere and <laughs> doctor right. finds it sometime later. Right. Uh, well, what do you think, Patrick, of all this stuff? Uh, I think Nardle is going to be injured, and the show is just going to take a more of a comical, comical approach. To it. He won't die, but he'll just be yeah, relegated to comedy after that. Is he going to put his head in a box and ship it back to put it in that tiger uh, pack? <laughs> No, or you could have him back. Yeah. Hopefully not. I'm. I don't. I don't want to remember anything from Matt Smith's run. <laughs> he's gonna get a Cyberman body, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, I deprogrammed the Cyberman, and now I got a cool body. I can shoot people." I mean, they might do that. They may make normal. This joint custody thing does not work out. You can. They could make the more. They can make him a Cyberman, but it doesn't work the way the Cybermen want. And Nardo like basically shorts out all their way to you know just by being connected to it. Messes up the whole Cyberman thing. I hope they don't do that. Don't listen to me. Don't do that. Don't make Naruto a Cyberman. And now, Joe, that's what uh, Moffat's going to secretly do. Yeah, don't, don't listen. Don't, don't make Naruto the one that saves everybody from Cybermen because he's a Cyberman himself. Speaking of Hydroflux, I've got him today. Oh, oh nice. cool. Very nice. Are they going to bring back the Brigadier Cyberman? Oh, no. Uh, that was a gimmick, man. They're not going to do that for the Cybermen episode? Uh, if they do that, but that's what gets me, though. So all those Cybermen that we will see, they're not going to be the ones from the graves, are they? They're going to be from a different dimension. Yeah. Well, aren't they in the other side of the galaxy fighting the freaking Emperor? They're mm-hmm. like, you know what they're doing? They're battling each other or something? I just, mm-hmm. I just want to know why we got so many different variations of Cybermen in the story that they're in. Because they probably wanted to do like the Simon of Daleks, where they're like, oh, we'll have all Cybermen, you know, short, yeah. like whatever, and... Look how well that went. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they have Clara show up, as a different Clara. You're obsessed with Clara. I, you know what? Today, honestly, I was watching... I really, despite everybody, I really liked her as a companion. I'm sorry. That's what they should have done. They should have had that be when they were on... Yeah, uh, uh, Scaro. Yeah. That should have been the route they hinted upon, which was going to happen to Clara, instead of this uh, Edgar Allan Poe stroke. Listen, back in, the, back in the day, I really liked Sarah Jane Smith. I really. Her and Joe Grant, and, you know, I, I mean, it was like Teagan I really liked. It was like, you know, and then even Romano. Romano's like my favorite, like Lala Ward, there's Romano, and, you know. Those are all, those are all great companions. Yeah, so I mean, like, I like Maybe Clara like, too. Jane, Perry, Nissa. I like Clara too, like, in that capacity, like, you know, as one of the greats, I feel. Although people yeah. may tend to differ. Great. That's why they, you know. So, 
Does anybody know who that woman got? What's that? I can't remember her name. No, the woman they, they're keeping secret. They've only just released the image of that woman who's going to be in, in series 10. Does anybody know who she's going to be playing? People say she's going to be Susan or she's going to be an iteration of Missy if she regenerates. What woman? Oh, I can't remember her name now. Oh, From what man. episode? No, a couple of days ago, the BBC announced, um, Radio Times announced uh, a woman being uh, having a part in uh, in uh, Doctor Who season ten. But she, but the woman says, "I can't tell you who I'm playing. I can't tell you when. I can't tell you how." Show me the picture, because if she's the female Doctor, then it's like, oh crap! I thought, yeah. I've, got, I've got to find it. I've got to find. All right. It. Well, we got. What's how much time we got left, guys? Six, six or five or one. Uh, five fifty-seven. All right. So. Again, do we still know if the doctor is going to be a woman or a man? I mean, or we have no clue. We well, have what's claiming no, no woman. So BBC is claiming no woman either. But are they lying? Whoever this woman is, um, for some reason they're hiding it. They're not telling us her identity of what character she's playing or why, who she is. At first we thought it might be the Ice Warrior woman, but obviously it's not her. But she's quite short. I mean, is she a new? How old is she? She's about four. She's quite old, you know. She's about in her late late thirties, early forties. She's old. Oh, that's old. How old are you? How <laughs> that's old? Thirties and forties? Oh uh, well, well, you know, uh, compared to Jesus, you know, are you like twenty two? <laughs> oh, no, I'm half a century, man. Come on. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I'm trying to find her name. I can't remember what her name was. 30s or 40s woman. Okay, so could she be a regenerated Susan or something? Right, now, listen, this is a good point you say that because um, we, we were, she's five foot six, right? She's quite short, a woman. So we tell you that with um, Caroline Ford, and Caroline Ford, when she was Susan, is five foot six at the time. So she is it the actress that played Susan in An Adventure in Space and Time? No, no, it's a totally different woman altogether. Okay, so she's not in it at all, that actress. No. Just David Bradley is in it as the I first think, doctor. I think just David Bradley for, the, for now. But is he going to be different? He's obviously going to be different from the way he portrayed William Hartnell in Adventure Space and Time. So he's going to act. He would have to, would have to be to, to um, pull off the doctor, the doctor kind of personality. Yes. Okay. Maybe the actress is playing Romana. Mm. I can't hey, where did she go? I wonder what all the time was. Well, you don't even see anything of her. Did she die, yeah, actually? I was really hoping she would be on Gallifrey, leading a rebellion against Rassilon, but Moffat screwed it. Well, up. according to Russell T. Davis, Lady Christina Del Souza was supposed to be Romana in a season with David Tennant if he stayed. Really? So that's what they hinted at when they kept playing, flirting with each other. We had we had something great, or we could have had something great, or whatever. We used to have something great. Yeah, they said that you look time lord, and she and she she said you look something, and he said you look time lord. Yeah, exactly. So that that was supposed to be the thing that she's just, you know, she become a rebel because of being with him, and she became a uh, uh, jewelry thief or whatever, and it was like that incarnation, and then it would turn out that she gets her memories back, and she's a model. Ooh. But I'd have to go into um, that side. And it's like also explanation that that's why he didn't want her with him. Like he, you know, he didn't want to start that thing again. He just died, you know. He told somebody no for the first time. It's like, that's like a pang, you know. Yeah. But she started telling people no after that, too. Like he did, it was against military people, remember? So weird because he wasn't against Harry Sullivan, he wasn't against the Brigadier. It's like I think people have their own notion when they write for Doctor Who how the doctor's supposed to be, but then they counter they contradict it when somebody else writes it differently, too. Yeah, you know, like he never saluted the Brigadier. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm somewhere, somewhere, I'm pretty sure that John Pertweet saluted the Brigadier somehow. I, I don't know if I believe that, that he never saluted Brigadier. I don't think so. Maybe even Patrick Trout sort of saluted him probably. You know? Her name is Samantha Spyro. Spy Sparrow? Spyro. S-P-I-R-O. That's her real name? 
That's a real name. That's the actress's name. Samantha Spiro. And now we're running out of time, but we're going to be looking it up. All right. Thank you, Pat. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Scott. And take care. Bye for now.